Welcome back, everyone. More than 100 terrorists may be working inside the U.S. military as we speak. That coming from a newly released study. It claims several suspected Islamic extremists have worked their way into the ranks, and at least a dozen of the cases are classified as, quote, a serious threat. How does this happen? What are we doing about it? Colonel and Congressman Alan West joins us right now. He served in the Army for 22 years. Colonel, your reaction to that number? Well, it is uh, quite shocking and alarming, but I think that if you go back to the 1991 exploratory memorandum that was found just uh, right across the Potomac here in Northern Virginia, it was a Muslim Brotherhood document that really talked about their goals and objectives for the United States of America. This is not surprising. There, you are witnessing an infiltration of not just uh, our defense systems, but our financial systems, our cultural, religious, political systems. So this is a wholehearted stealth jihad type of attack. And, you know, Hassan uh, kills, uh, kills and wounds so many at Fort Hood, mm -hmm. and we call that workplace violence. Now they're calling the Islamic extremists that are, are, that are in our military insider threats. That, according to the FBI and DOD, we're mislabeling it again. Well, this is somewhat like calling Sharia compliant finance insider trading. You know, there's a recalcitrance that we have here in the United States of America, and I think it does emanate from the current administration, and also the previous administration shows signs as well of not really wanting to identify and clearly articulate who this adversary is, and uh, they continue to use that to their advantage, because we're showing tolerance, right. which will lead to our cultural suicide. And Colonel, real quick, I got another topic, but I want to finish up on this. Is it possible in a unit that you functioned in for over 20 years to not know the guy next to you is a terrorist because you're so close, you share so much and train so often? Well, I think that you have instances where you may not know everything about someone, but you know, mostly we would know what was going on in our barracks. And if we had soldiers who lived off post, uh, their platoon sergeants still, you know, had the opportunity to go out and, and uh, inspect their quarters off post and talk to them. But I believe that you have a military that is turning their head because there's a lot of, you know, retribution against standing up and uh, saying something about someone. As we saw in the uh, Hassan case, he should have never been transferred from Walter Reed down to Fort Hood. Exactly. Now i got to tell you about this other story that you're familiar with, but I'll share it with the audience. There is a Norwegian. Norwegian, evidently, that has been training in Yemen, that has been essentially waiting for the go sign to attack a Western target. This is a, a big fear among terror, counter terror experts. So he's gone over there and, and, is, and has got radicalized. Your reaction? Well, it's no different from what we saw here in the United States of America when the uh, young black male by the name of Carlos Bledsoe uh, converted to Islam. He traveled to Somalia, then to Yemen, received terrorist training. He came back and shot two U.S. soldiers at the Little Rock recruiting station, killing one of them. So we have to be very concerned about these lone wolf type of attacks, these uh, one-man terrorist cells that will be planted anywhere. And uh, it, this is all about terrorism. This is all about making you very afraid to go to the mall. Uh, you remember John Lee? Uh, uh, Muhammad, I believe that was his name up here, the D.C. sniper. Uh, so those are the type of things that we can expect. We're a long way from being finished with the quote-unquote war against Islamic totalitarianism and terror. We have to be more vigilant, and I think it also comes back to securing our borders as well. Absolutely, and you know, it's almost, that makes it almost impossible to so-called do something we shouldn't be doing anywhere, and that is profile, especially when the next guy trying to kill you suddenly is Norwegian. Yeah, but see, Brian, I don't call it profiling. I call it trend analysis, and that's what we have to start doing and get away from these uh, divisive terms. Okay, you got it. Uh, Congressman Colonel West, you're a busy guy. Thanks so much for spending some quality time with us this morning. Thanks. You got it. Take care.